رحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ آئی ہیو ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ جینڈر پیارٹی اینڈ پیس اینڈ آئی تھاٹ دیٹ آئی شوڈ بگن ود مائی اسٹوری ویل ناٹ فرام نائنٹین فورٹی سیون وین آئی واز بورن آف کورس بٹ فرام ٹوینٹی الیون وین آئی کنٹیسٹیڈ مائی فرسٹ الیکشن آئی کم فرام اے پولیٹیکل فیملی اینڈ آئی واز آئی نیو وٹ آئی واز ریئلی گیٹنگ ان ٹو بٹ آئی تھنک آئی واز اے لیل مور گنگ ہو دین آئی شوڈ ہیو بین آفٹر دا الیکشنز آئی ڈیڈ وین I was a lot darker, lost a lot more weight, and my voice was like a croak of a toad. And I won an election. I'm a young female, and I feel like I can conquer this world. I'm the superwoman that I've been thinking of. I'm the change that I've always wanted. And then in the beginning of 2012, I become Minister of Social Welfare and Women Development. I'm like, wow, I'm like, seriously, this is what Pakistan wanted. Theresa May, Angela Merkel, Farzana Yaakov, complete sense. And I'm sitting in my department, and I'm invited. One of the staff members comes and he's like, ma'am, you have to come and distribute chicken. And I'm like, okay, why do I need to do that? Now we're talking about women empowerment and entrepreneurship so the response is that ma'am so there is this plan that if you give 20 chickens to a woman what will happen is that she'll take care of them those chicken will give eggs some of them she'll consume her family will consume some of them she can sell Some of them she can keep for more chickens. And you know what will happen? Wonder. There will be more hens, and so there will be more eggs, and so there will be more chickens. And I'm thinking, I think I've heard this somewhere. Have you heard of this? I was like, wow. Pakistan has a Sheikh Chilli solution for women empowerment. I've, and Being a Pakistani, looking down at ourselves, I'm like, that's so Pakistani. But guess what? That's not very Pakistani. That happens everywhere. Are we looking for equality or equitability? What do we really want? And how are we going to fix it to bring the peace that we aspire for? Will we need to do that by beginning a story which is different? When it comes to narratives, the narratives start when you're really young. And what do girls hear of? Cinderella? Really poor girl, step family which is wicked, and a rich handsome guy is going to come and save you. Beauty and the Beast, you name it. There's always this good looking rich guy who's going to come and save you. That's how we bring up our girls. The princess syndrome. That's where we need to change the narrative. Dearest, you gotta save yourself. There ain't no prince coming for you. Please. So we start by changing the folk stories. Also, Pakistani love tragedy. Asian culture loves tragedy. Laila Majnu, Sasi Punnu, you love, you die. You don't need to do that. Stay alive. Change the story. That's empowerment. You don't need to die for an idea. You don't need to die to be different. You just need to have the passion to believe that you can make it, and you will. All the stories that you're, you're told, all the stories that you share, are those which are sad and which are bad. And that translates into sadness and badness. Men are badasses and women are sad. We need to change that. Women cannot be free. They cannot be change agents if they are considered to be movers alone. This has to be a we, a us, a togetherness. The quantity that men have provided to this world, agricultural, revolution, industrial revolution, women have to give it 
quality and that is what they bring when you bring them on board that is what they give to you a different opinion a different quality and that is what it needs what do we really need for peace contentment if you're not peace at here there is no peace out there so every one of us can actually make a difference if you set aside your gender biases that are taught to you from your mother's womb my favorite word and see i'm a pakistani it had to be tragic it's zul it's an arabic word and as per lisan al arabi which is a very prestigious dictionary it means putting something out of place exceeding the limit and there is the dilemma of this world everything is out of place and almost every other thing is exceeding the limits if we could somehow put people and things in their right places they would then present themselves in the right perspectives and so people would understand if people would rightly understand the conflicts would minimize be it within your house outside the house on the road or in the world the issue is that we do not understand each other and language is so important so this zulm this needs to be fixed by justice and equitability equality might not be achieved but fairness can and that is where we must go we need to walk the talk to date all we've done is talk and talk we need to change that narrative as well and now i'm going to share a few numbers i did not put up a powerpoint because i want you to look at me when i speak and i want to look at you when i speak i don't want to be looking over there and this is recycled and reused paper my children abused it and then i abused it <laughs> so according to rape abuse and incest national network rain this is an american institute and these numbers are american in america out of every 1000 rapes 310 are reported only 6 are convicted are uh, so 1000 rapes 994 people who perpetrated the crime will walk free this is america now if we want peace we need to create an environment where people feel safe if half the section of your society feels threatened for sure it's going to be a threat multiplier and there will be an increase in conflicts most of your energies are being utilized in either protecting yourself or protecting your loved one if that security that environment can be made a safe place you would be putting it to use for better things such as world peace but what's a world peace if you're not settled over here your world is here your world ends when you die that is all the time you have that is all the universe that you need to fix the heavens are equitable they're fair there's a balance over there the issue is that we are unable to translate that balance that we look up at to what we would like to look towards and we need to fix that simply by changing our narratives now even if we don't reach gender parity i think this issue could be resolved why because most of our jobs will be taken up by robots and to date at least as far as i know they don't have genders so this could there's an auto correction as there is an auto correction in market but there's a small issue in this in the automation in the ai industry there are more men than women so these robots tend to be more manly than womanly that issue needs to be fixed but women are more artistic they're the ones who give quality and men are in the production 
somehow we need to fix this. Either we have more women in these fields or we can have men who understand women. And once again, I come back to the point. It's just about communication and understanding each other. Not every work has to be done by everyone. Not every woman has to be a man to fill the boots of a man to be a successful woman. You can be yourself. You can be a housewife. You can be a caretaker and a caregiver and still be an important part of an economy. Sadly or happily, the only translation that takes place with numbers when it comes to parity, with feminism, with freedom, is that within two decades, we will be reaching gender parity in education. Within two decades, men an equal number of men and women will be educated. But political parity, one century. That's the time we need for gender parity. When it comes to health, more good news, two centuries. There's something happening. How come in, in two decades, women are going to be equally educated as men are, but it's going to take us two centuries to be as healthy as men are, or to have the opportunity to access health. You know why? Because most of the systems are designed by men. We need more women at the top of the pyramid. The decision makers, the power corridors, we need more women. How many women do you see in conflict resolution? I've been to the UN, been there. I've been to OIC, been there. I've been to European Parliament. Mostly, and okay, so here's me. I don't feel very sad about it, it's just me who's among all these powerful men speaking about conflict resolution because I come from Kashmir. But in the long run, after I get over my pride, this is not really nice. There should be more women. The number is increasing. But now that today we know that there is this difference, why do we need to wait for a century, for two centuries to fix that which is very obvious as th at this point of time? We need to create safe spaces for women. Women need to create their own frames. Women need to create their own seats and positions where they can work, where they don't need to choose between having children and not having children to progress in their profession. Procreation comes naturally. It's been millennia since human beings have been the way we have. And there must be some issue why women are not where they should be. And that is because we want women to be men. And that will never be successful. So the AI I told you about, the artificial intelligence. Here's a, a headline that I read just yesterday. Business Insider, the EU is currently debating whether or not to grant robots personhood. Well, you know, EU is actually thinking about it, but Saudi Arabia did you hear about it? They gave a robot a nationality. She looked rather feminine, I must say. <laughs> yeah, I, I was impressed. Saudia is really fast track. But then there was another news that I read. And so, you know, I use Sheikh Google. Uh, you got everything from religion to nonsense to everything. It's what you want to dig. I was not digging anything funny, seriously. But I don't know why it came up. So the, here's this independent women forum. And the headline is, Descri uh, describing breastfeeding as natural is unethical because it reinforces gender roles. I'm like, what, WTF? By the way, WTF means Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Please. That's what I meant. And I'm like, where, where are we going, seriously? Now we're challenging our own physiology, our own biology? Why is that? Because women have to be like men to be successful in a man's world. This world is for you and for me and for our children. Let us not separate it into genders. 
Let us not think in silos. We cannot be semicircle. We must complete the circle of life. Everything has a circle of life, a circle of existence. You begin, you end. But what we're trying to do is live in semicircles, and that will never be successful. Now, what does a peaceful future really require? It requires justice to prevail. If women have been brought up with the stories of a beautiful, handsome, rich man is going to come and save you, what have boys been brought up upon? What have been they hearing? You have to be brave. You have to take care. You're the bread earner. You have to take care. And in doing so, what does a man have to do? He has to be aggressive, more so than he actually is. What happens with that aggression? What do you equate aggression to? Conflict. He is going to express that aggression. He's been taught that this woman, this house, this place is yours. You have to take care. You're the caretaker. And that is just what he does. He takes care in his own manner. So if we're looking for peace, once again, we need to change the story. We take care of each other. We walk together. If I'm not there, you will not be there. Thank you. Thank you.